to improve their field goal percentage and Larry Johnson to help them in that point. We're going to find out right now. Here is the commissioner, David Stern. With the first pick in the 1991 NBA draft, the Charlotte Hornets select Larry Johnson from University of Nevada, Las Vegas. Larry Johnson from UNLV. He says, these are his words about himself. I can score from eight or nine feet in. I can rebound. I can defend the post. A lot of people have talked about his size, listed at 6'7", throughout his collegiate career. Larry Johnson at the Chicago camp measured in his socks at 6'5 half. But remember, another player who went high in the draft, he wasn't number one, but Charles Barkley, who was always 6'6". They measure him at 6'4 and a half, and Charles Barkley, of course, has played bigger than that. So here is Larry Johnson, the number one player selected in the draft of 1991. You know, Bob, I think another thing that Larry Johnson brings to the Charlotte Charlotte Hornets, and this kid is a winner, and I don't think you can take away from the fact that wherever he's been, his teams have won, and they've won big, they've won an NCAA championship, and I think that when you take an expansion team, you need to bring a kid in with that kind of attitude. You need some help up front. He's been able to rebound at the high school level, Ju Juco, and then at Vegas, and you just cannot believe that because of his great work ethic that he's not going to get the job done because you're talking about an individual with a 250-pound-plus frame. You know that he can move people out. 6% body fat is the term I hear also. This man is chiseled out of granite. You see his 90-91 figures at UNLV, and we look at some of his play at UNLV, but now this is history. Now we've got to see him perform in the big time. But you know what? Also, too, I think you have to factor in here is he played on a team with great talent, so he's played in a team concept before, which I think is very, very important because as you build an NBA team, the better the players get, you have to be a part of the whole program, and I also think that he's going to be able to do that very well. Well, if they play him at the power position because of his skills off the dribble, and the fact that he can make the jump shot out, even out to 20 feet, he is going to create a problem for big play players at that 6'10", the 7 foot in guarding him. In the 1991 NBA draft, the New Jersey Nets select Kenny Anderson from Georgia Tech. Ha, ha, ha. Oh my, Kenny Anderson, the local product from New York City, will stay. As a matter of fact, he was in the old neighborhood just yesterday with friends. And one of the friends, someone who just saw him in the neighborhood, rolled the window of the car down and said, Kenny, stay at home. And he said, not up to me. Well, the New Jersey Jets, the New Jersey Nets have made it. Jets a good word here. This is a tremendous, a lot of people think that this is a point guard. And Hubie Brown, I know you know him very well. A point guard in the mold of Isaiah Thomas. That's a heavy burden to place on this young man who's only a, coming out of his sophomore year. Well, especially the fact that he's slight in size. But the greatest evaluator of high school talent in, in America is a guy named Harry Garfinkel. And he came out and stated when he was in high school, he's the greatest guard in the history of New York City basketball. Just think of the great ones who have played here in this area. And then for the people to be able to be able to see him now, you know, throughout his entire career. It's a, it's a real shot in the arm for basketball in this area. Well, I think you see some happy family members there. He's going to be close to home. You know, I think the great thing about Kenny Anderson, he showed in his freshman year, is that he's actually a better player when he's got better players around him. And I think that that's the way you evaluate him. Last year, he shot 43% when he was asked to, asked to take all the shots. When he had Dennis Scott, when he had Brian Oliver, they went to the Final Four and played such great basketball. Exactly. And I think this is a guy, when you look at the NBA today, you begin the way the game is played, you must have a great point guard to get to the top level in the NBA, to get to where you want to go, to be a champion. And I think this kid has all the ingredients to take them there. Well, I'll tell you what, Petrovic is over playing in the world tournament right now. I know he's happy because that guy, all he'll have to do is spot up as the off guard at New Jersey. It would be like shooting fish in a barrel. Oh, he helped make Dennis Scott a rich man, of course, as Dennis Scott was selected in the draft last year. He's an underclassman, went to Orlando. He played at Georgia Tech with Kenny Anderson. So Kenny Anderson is selected by New Jersey. He'll stay at home to play his professional basketball. And now here's the person. The Sacramento Kings select Billy Owens from Syracuse University.
Billy Owens goes to Sacramento. He's officially 6'7 in his stocking feet, 222 pounds. Went to Carlisle, Pennsylvania High School. He says his quote, my strength is I can put the ball on the floor. He's a great talent. As a matter of fact, uh, most people feel he can play four positions. Well, I think that uh, the fact that he is a versatile player makes him attractive to Sacramento because when you look at Lionel Simmons and Tisdale and Carr and Bonner and Coswell and Winnington and Lechner and Sampson, that's the front line people they now have. Will they be able to slide Billy Owens or Lionel Simmons into the backcourt playing both together as a 2-3? I think to do that, they're going to have to have a very strong ball handler. Yeah, but I, I feel that his ball handling ability, Billy Owens, he can play that two-guard position and then also give you a strong backup at small forward. He handles the ball extremely well. Uh, a real winner at the high school level in Pennsylvania. Did an outstanding job at Syracuse, and he can do it all. Plus, in Dick Mata's style of play, you can post him up as that second guard and then improve your rebounding, which they are the worst team in the league in rebounding. So you're not only going to get uh, a guard that can board for you, but also hit the offensive board. UB, I think the question is, can Travis Mays slide over and play any point guard for them? Because right now they still have a big need for a point guard to run that ball club. Well, they also have a surplus of guys who can score up front in regards with Tisdale and Carr. So we, we could possibly see some trades after this draft. 91 NBA draft, the Denver Nuggets select Dikembe Mutombo from Georgetown University. 7'1", 230 pounds. Went to Institute Boboto in Kinshasa, Zaire for high school. He's 25 years old. Very high IQ young man. Very intelligent. Not just, not just a man who's smart and aware in basketball sense, but speaks five languages and has said all along that basketball is obviously a career where he hopes to make a lot of money and now is being insured of that but also hopes to use it to develop a business career later his native language was uh, french i understand that he's even uh, a good cook <laughs> well now you know you, you look at their front line right now uh, if they keep blair at that center position you have two big people up front because this young man going up the stairs could play big forward for you just as well as the center position and that would give you uh, two people who could rebound and then also people who could play on the boxes and the power game now you know we're not the general managers and we're not telling them what to do here but <laughs> but if you are going to start and you are going to make a run at the playoffs you must defend and this is the best place to start Kembe Matumbo, you see him playing on the inside, the physical strength, number 55 for Georgetown. How quickly does Matumbo help Denver? How much impact will he have on the Denver Nuggets early in the season in 1991? Well, you know, first of all, you look at him, he's a, he's a kid that can run, he has great stamina, he's going to be able to give him 36 minutes a night, you know, at that position. He's a wiry kind of player. He backs off of you. He can block shots. He's not the kind of guy that's going to pound on you all night long. And the style of ball they play, changing ends of the floor, he's going to pick up points by being able to get out and outrun the opposing centers in the uh, in the transition game. Okay. After the Miami Heat selects Steve Smith from Michigan State University. Steve Smith is the two guard, 6'6", 200 pounds. He can also play some point guard positions, very good athletic skills. He can drive to the basket, good range, a tremendous talent. Well, I think Billy Cunningham feels like this kid has star quality written on him. You think now Steve Smith, you think Willie Burton, you think of Glenn Rice, you think of Ronnie Sykley, some of the guys now, the athletes they can throw out on the floor. Uh, I like what they're doing down in Miami. I think a lot of people felt their need was in power forward with Doug Smith. I think that this, uh, this kid right here has an opportunity to be a star in this league. The fact that he is such an outstanding shooter with range is another major plus. Uh, Miami plays extremely hard. They're very talented, but they would lose so many close ball games, especially games on the road. The reason being, they're one of the lower field goal percentage teams in the league at 46%. This guy, he can get to where he wants to go with his size. He can also rebound for you as a, as a, a big guard, 
and then the fact that he is such an outstanding shooter and he gets fouled a lot and he can make the foul shots. Nothing but a major plus for Miami. Steve Smith from Michigan State University. He went to high school at Pershing in Detroit, Michigan. And uh, as we pointed out, he's been an All-American. He can certainly stick it from outside. Average 18 and a half points for his career. A Wooden Award finalist. And he goes to the Miami Heat. 223. Now what he is is, some scouts say he is a small, he's a, he's a guy that everyone wants to play big forward, but he has a small forward's body. But he can get the job done for you. As you look at him in action for the Missouri Tigers, Doug Smith, first team All-American, of course, all big eight, played in the World Games and the Goodwill Games, so he got some international experience and saw that he handled the, the pressure there in terms of the big bodies. He's a pretty good passer inside, and he goes to the Dallas Mavericks, and they get some inside insurance with this young man. Next question I would ask you to coaches is, can he play right away? Is he another player who can be an immediate rookie impact player in your view? Well, I think that if, if everyone was healthy at Dallas, let's face it, you have Tarpley, Donald Coach, you've added Billy Owens, you've added Simmons, you've got Carr. He needs a passing center that will rebound and do the things he'd like to do defensively. I know Sacramento would like to get it. We'll see if they'll be able to get that done or not. This is one of the things that we talked about at the top of the draft. In this draft, there could be people drafting for other teams, and then we will see the switch. Uh, because when you think of Minnesota, they're also looking for a power forward, a proven power forward who can score. They have that they traded Mark Macon to, uh, excuse me, Michael Adams to get Mark Macon. So they traded a small guard to get a 6'5 guard who's going to give them so much more than what they're really looking for. And uh, to get him at this pick, I, I really I really think they've improved the ball club. Well, this also gives Chris Jackson the number three pick in a draft last year who was a disappointment this season, whether it was medical, whether it was the altitude, uh, Michael Adams ahead of him. This gives him a chance to step up and, and maybe see the form that he showed in his first two years at LSU. Fans were hoping that he would be there available for New York, and, and I know at that number 12. there was a lot of things that New York was trying to do, maybe with Orlando, maybe to switch 10 and 12 to get Stacey Ogden at 10. Orlando feeling they could still get their guy at 12. So this, I think, really upsets the apple cart, so to speak, here in New York. Now, to set up Stacey Ogden for you a little bit, if you're not completely familiar and don't remember his play at uh, UNLV, a lot of people say he is a Dennis Rodman-type forward defender. Strong on defense, maybe a little bit better offensive threat than Dennis Rodman is, but certainly that type maybe Rodman a little tougher, Ogman a little more balanced. Would you agree with that, Hubie? Yeah, well, what has happened over the past year, he has improved his outside shot. So facing the basket, he is not only now a finisher on the fast break and a slasher off the dribble, but now he has added the perimeter game. And in NBA basketball, that's true. He does not have the weight, and he does not have that upper body strength or size of a Dennis Rodman. Dennis Rodman is six foot nine and legitimate. He's an opportunity to, to, to go in and play defensively as a two and as a three. His three-point range in college this year was shot 47% from the three-point line, so he has improved his shot. The one thing you know you're going to get from him is he's going to come out and he's going to run the floor. He's going to defend. And again, you know, Yubi, you coached, and I had an opportunity to coach. You can't say enough about taking a young man who's been in a winning program because you take guys who were losing college and it's very difficult to bring them in and expect them to help turn around. One thing that, that you have to have when you have a low post game is you have to have perimeter shooting. And go. when Mark Price went down, you did not have to guard Cleveland on the perimeter. They could not score. This kid will give them spacing on the floor to allow Nance, Hot Rod Williams, Brad Doherty now to establish the low post game that they had when they won 57 ball games. Well, Lenny likes to play that medium pace type of a tempo there at Cleveland, and everything functions on you being able to knock in that 20 to 20 foot jump shot, 20 to 21 foot shot. If not, if you have three point range, now you are a major asset. This young man is blessed with great perimeter shooting ability. Terrell Brandon, a junior undergraduate, early entry, selected by the Cleveland High. Now, when you look at Anthony's game, he can run the break and he makes excellent decisions in the open floor. You must play him because he has range 
and then he can beat you off the dribble and either score or deliver the pass. Well, Greg Anthony also knows how to play to the crowd, as you saw him doing that, and now holding up the New York Knicks jacket as he joins the New York Knickerbockers. Pat Riley will be his head coach. He'll join Patrick Ewing. We'll come back to talk more about the 1991 NBA draft right after this. The New York Knicks select Patrick Ewing. 